Amputation, Wikipedia article audio. Amputation is the removal of a limb by trauma, medical illness, or surgery. As a surgical measure, it is used to control pain or a disease process in the affected limb, such as malignancy or gangrene. In some cases, it is carried out on individuals as a preventative surgery for such problems. A special case is that of congenital amputation, a congenital disorder, where fetal limbs have been cut off by constrictive bands. In some countries, amputation of the hands, feet, or other body parts is or was used as a form of punishment for people who committed crimes. Amputation has also been used as a tactic in war and acts of terrorism, it may also occur as a war injury. In some cultures and religions, minor amputations or mutilations are considered a ritual accomplishment. In the U.S., the majority of new amputations occur due to complications of the vascular system, especially from diabetes. Between 1988 and 1996, there were an average of 133,735 hospital discharges for amputation per year in the U.S. Types Leg Lower limb, or leg, amputations can be divided into two broad categories, minor amputations and major amputations, minor amputations generally refers to the amputation of digits. Major amputations are commonly referred to as below-knee amputation, above-knee amputation, and so forth. To avoid ambiguity the correct terminology for major amputations is described in ISO 8549-2-1989, these being Common partial foot amputations include Chopar, Lisfron, and Ray amputations, Common forms of ankle disarticulations include Syme, Pyrogoff, and Boyd. A less commonly occurring major amputation is the Van Ness rotation slash rotation plasty. The correct terminology for arm, or upper limb amputations is also described in ISO 8549-2-1989, these being a variant of the transradial amputation is the Kruk-Enberg procedure in which the radius and ulna are used to create a stump capable of a pincer action. Hemicorporectomy, or amputation at the waist, and decapitation, or amputation at the neck, are the most radical amputations. Arm Genital modification and mutilation may involve amputating tissue although not necessarily as a result of injury or disease. In some rare cases when a person has become trapped in a deserted place, with no means of communication or hope of rescue, the victim has amputated his or her own limb. Other Body Integrity Identity Disorder is a psychological condition in which an individual feels compelled to remove one or more of their body parts, usually a limb. In some cases, that individual may take drastic measures to remove the offending appendages, either by causing irreparable damage to the limb so that medical intervention cannot save the limb, or by causing the limb to be severed. The first step is ligating the supplying artery and vein, to prevent hemorrhage. The muscles are transected, and finally, the bone is sawed through with an oscillating saw. Sharp and rough edges of the bone are filed down, skin and muscle flaps are then transposed over the stump, occasionally with the insertion of elements to attach a prosthesis. Distal stabilization of muscles is recommended. This allows effective muscle contraction which reduces atrophy allows functional use of the stump and maintains soft tissue coverage of the remnant bone. The preferred stabilization technique is myodesis where the muscle is attached to the bone or its periosteum. 
In joint disarticulation amputations tenodeses may be used where the muscle tendon is attached to the bone. Muscles should be attached under similar tension to normal physiological conditions. Self-amputation The use of rigid removable dressings in transtibial amputations, rather than soft bandaging has been shown to improve healing time, reduce edema, prevent knee flexion contractures and reduce complications, including further amputation, from external trauma such as falls onto the stump and should be considered standard practice. Causes Postoperative management, in addition to wound healing, should consider maintenance of limb strength, joint range, edema management, preservation of the intact limb and stump desensitization. Circulatory Disorders Traumatic amputation is the partial or total avulsion of a part of a body during a serious accident, like traffic, labor, or combat. Traumatic amputation of a human limb, either partial or total, creates the immediate danger of death from blood loss. Neoplasm Orthopedic surgeons often assess the severity of different injuries using the mangled extremity severity score. Given different clinical and situational factors, they can predict the likelihood of amputation. This is especially useful for emergency physicians to quickly evaluate patients and decide on consultations. Traumatic amputation is uncommon in humans. Loss of limb usually happens immediately during the accident, but sometimes a few days later after medical complications. Statistically the most common causes of traumatic amputations are The development of the science of microsurgery over last 40 years has provided several treatment options for a traumatic amputation, depending on the patient's specific trauma and clinical situation. Amputations are usually traumatic experiences. They can reduce the quality of life for patients in addition to being expensive. In the USA, a typical prosthetic limb costs in the range of $10,000-15,000 according to the American Diabetic Association. In some populations, preventing amputations is a critical task. Methods in preventing amputation, limb sparing techniques, depend on the problems that might cause amputations to be necessary. Chronic infections, often caused by diabetes or decubitus ulcers in bedridden patients, are common causes of infections that lead to gangrene, which would then necessitate amputation. Trauma There are two key challenges. First, many patients have impaired circulation in their extremities, and second, they have difficulty curing infections in limbs with poor vasculation. Deformities Crush injuries where there is extensive tissue damage and poor circulation also benefit from hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The high level of oxygenation and revascularization speed up recovery times and prevent infections. Partial foot amputation, amputation of the lower limb distal to the ankle joint, ankle disarticulation, amputation of the lower limb at the ankle joint, transtibial amputation, amputation of the lower limb between the knee joint and the ankle joint commonly referred to as a baloney amputation, knee disarticulation, amputation of the lower limb at the knee joint, transfemoral amputation, amputation of the lower limb between the hip joint and the knee joint, commonly referred to an above knee amputation, hip disarticulation, amputation of the lower limb at the hip joint, Transpelvic disarticulation amputation of the whole lower limb together with all OR part of the pelvis. This is also known as a hemipelvectomy or hindquarter amputation. 
A study found that the patented method called circulator boot achieved significant results in prevention of amputation in patients with diabetes and arteriosclerosis. Another study found it also effective for healing limb ulcers caused by peripheral vascular disease. The boot checks the heart rhythm and compresses the limb between heartbeats, the compression helps cure the wounds in the walls of veins and arteries, and helps to push the blood back to the heart. For victims of trauma, advances in microsurgery in the 1970s have made replantations of severed body parts possible. Partial hand amputation, wrist disarticulation, Transradial amputation, commonly referred to as below elbow or forearm amputation, elbow disarticulation, transhumeral amputation, commonly referred to as above elbow amputation, shoulder disarticulation, forequarter amputation. The establishment of laws, rules, and guidelines and employment of modern equipment help protect people from traumatic amputations. Infection Athletic performance Legal punishment Surgery The individual may experience psychological trauma and emotional discomfort. The stump will remain an area of reduced mechanical stability. Limb loss can present significant or even drastic practical limitations. Traffic accidents, labor accidents, agricultural accidents with machines and mower equipment, electric shock hazards, firearms, bladed weapons, explosives, violent rupture of ship rope or industry wire rope, ring traction, building doors and car doors gas cylinder explosions, other rare accidents. A large proportion of amputees experience the phenomenon of phantom limbs, they feel body parts that are no longer there. These limbs can itch, ache, burn, feel tense, dry or wet, locked in or trapped or they can feel as if they are moving. Some scientists believe it has to do with a kind of neural map that the brain has of the body, which sends information to the rest of the brain about limbs regardless of their existence. Phantom sensations and phantom pain may also occur after the removal of body parts other than the limbs, e.g. after amputation of the breast, extraction of a tooth or removal of an eye. A similar phenomenon is unexplained sensation in a body part unrelated to the amputated limb. It has been hypothesized that the portion of the brain responsible for processing stimulation from amputated limbs, being deprived of input, expands into the surrounding brain, such that an individual who has had an arm amputated will experience unexplained pressure or movement on his face or head. In many cases, the phantom limb aids in adaptation to a prosthesis, as it permits the person to experience proprioception of the prosthetic limb. To support improved resistance or usability, comfort, or healing, some type of stump socks may be worn instead of or as part of wearing a prosthesis. First choice, surgical amputation, break, prosthesis. 2nd choice, surgical amputation, transplantation of other tissue, plastic reconstruction, 3rd choice, replantation, reconnection, revascularization of amputated limb, by microscope, 4th choice, transplantation of cadaveric hand. Another side effect can be heterotopic ossification especially when a bone injury is combined with a head injury. The brain signals the bone to grow instead of scar tissue to form, and nodules and other growth can interfere with prosthetics and sometimes require further operations. This type of injury has been especially common among soldiers wounded by improvised explosive devices in the Iraq War. Due to technologic advances in prosthetics, 
many amputees live active lives with little restriction. Organizations such as the Challenged Athletes Foundation have been developed to give amputees the opportunity to be involved in athletics and adaptive sports such as amputee soccer. The word amputation is derived from the Latin amputare, to cut away, from ambi and putare. The English word amputation was first applied to surgery in the 17th century, possibly first in Peter Lowe's A Discourse of the Whole Art of Chirurgery. His work was derived from 16th century French texts and early English writers also used the words extirpation, disarticulation, and dismemberment, or simply cutting, but by the end of the 17th century amputation had come to dominate as the accepted medical term. Method Postoperative Management Trauma 2 Causes 2 Treatment Epidemiology Prevention Prognosis History Notable Cases